How's everyone doing today? This is Noah with the Life of the Zigs. Coming back at you with another video on my main electrical panel. I recently did a swap with the electrical panel being on this wall right here and I moved it to this brick wall over here. Yes, it's only about two feet. However, the panel was located in this corner here, which made it hard to access anything around the panel as well as on top. Also, this piping right here for my sewer was rubbing up against the top of the panel, actually pushing the panel down slightly. So I made the decision to fully remove it off this wall and move it to that wall. Sadly, when I did this project, I only used a time-lapse feature when recording, so that is all I have of the footage-wise for doing this electrical panel. However, I will talk about it and let you know some tips and tricks to do it. Also, I want to say that I am not a licensed electrical contractor. My father is, who was helping me. However, every single state, county, and town is different. Codes are different. So please make sure to refer to your county, town, or state and get a permit when you do this to properly do it. And if you're not comfortable with it, hire a licensed electrician to do it but at least you have some knowledge of what they will need to do and how much work it takes to do something of this scale the last thing i want to talk about in this before we get started into the time lapse is i installed a few things while i was doing this panel first thing being this ig series surge protector basically it's a whole panel surge protector whole house surge protector and if a lightning strike were to happen or any power surges, it should take that surge and send it to that unit and not anywhere in the house. The other thing I want to talk about is if you open up the panel here, I installed an interlock kit for a generator. I have a 15 kilowatt Generac generator, which can power my whole house, basically, as long as I'm not demanding too much out of it. So if you ever do this and have a portable generator, please make sure to install a interlock kit with the appropriate breaker and wiring. One last thing I wanna cover is in your panel, please make sure to label everything appropriately. I like to use uh, Sheets, Google Sheets, and label it and print it out. Uh, this is the best way in my opinion, as if you have changes, you can just go back in, type it up and reprint it out. You don't need to erase anything and everyone can read that writing. With that being said, guys, let's get into the video and I'll show you how to get it done. All right, so obviously the first step is to start setting up where you're gonna mount the panel. I'm using fur strips and black painted plywood. I highly recommend this as it makes mounting the electrical panel a lot easier to that wood surface versus the brick. And it allows you to mount stuff around it like I've done with the surge protector. And if you wanna add an outlet later on and stuff like that. Once you have that board mounted or wherever you're gonna mount it set up, it's time to start disconnecting everything out of that old panel. This is also a good time to see if there's any problems with the panel. I actually ended up replacing my whole panel, which I will link down in the description below of the one I used. If you are gonna do a job like this, in my mind, there's no point in not spending the extra few hundred dollars on a new panel and even new breakers just so you have everything fresh and clean and know that if there's an issue it shouldn't be any of that you also want to make sure you're labeling your wires good basically I pulled each wire off and wrapped a number around it and then corresponded the number I wrapped around it on a piece of paper and wrote the name of it that's the easiest method in my mind and it works the best just make sure you're writing that number big and whatever tape or however you get it on there stays on there as you're gonna be moving the wires around a lot once all the wires are disconnected and obviously the meter has been pulled uh, it's time to start fishing that wire through to the meter your main feed for the house and setting it up to wherever you need to go. Like I said, I was only moving the panel two feet, as you can see, so I just needed to get a little bit longer bit of wire to fish from the meter into the panel. It is kind of a weird bend there, as you can see. However, it was just the best way we can do it. This is a 200 amp service that is going to the house, which requires a four aught aluminum wire which is rated for 200 amps. So it's definitely a little difficult to move around. However, it can get done. One thing I wanna to touch on real quick as well is please make sure to pull a permit for this, even if you are gonna do it yourself. You wanna get it properly inspected 
and you want to make sure that your town or city or county whoever knows that you're doing this project as you will need to pull the meter and you should also let the power company know continuing on the service is now all hooked up on the outside and on the inside so now i'm fishing all those wires back through the panel and starting to tie it all together what I ended up doing is bringing all the wires in, then hooking all the grounds in first, then all the neutrals, then after that all the hots with all their individual breakers. So I felt this was the best way to stay organized and the best way to do it so you don't miss a wire and also so you don't have a bunch of crisscross wires and try to make the panel look semi-organized. Another thing to think about when doing a project like this is how is your current grounding? I currently only had one ground rod right directly outside of the house there for the panel. So I ended up adding another one, which I put about 10 feet away from the current one, and ran new wire and tied it all together. I believe we used six gauge ground wire and then brought it into the house and tied it into the panel. While we were also doing this, I decided to run a new service to my garage which it was currently a 60 amp service and I wanted to upgrade it to 100 amp service as I do do a little bit of welding and I wanted it to be able to support that out in the garage. The wire we ran for that was a number one SER cable. Again, I'll link this down in the description below just so everyone knows. As you can see, we just got power back in the utility room we're in. When it comes to time frame, obviously this needs to get done in one day because you really can't go without more than a day of having power. So we started at about eight o'clock in the morning and then didn't get done till almost 10 o'clock at night. That does also include us running a new wire as you can see right there to the garage and hooking that in as well as running a new wire and installing a generator outlet on the outside of the house so this is definitely a task that can be done in a day by yourself but just remember to get someone to help you with this as the extra hands make light work as people like to say one last thing I want to touch on again is panel organization. Sadly, I tried to keep it very organized, but I just had so many wires coming in that was already all moved around and out of shape. It was kind of hard to reform them and make them organized. I did the best I could, but the more organized the inside of your panel is, the easier it will be to work on it down later in life or whenever you need to open it back up again and add another breaker, remove something or change something. So. Try not to have a big cluster of wires in there and just keep it nice and uniform. One last thing here, I just want to give a big shout out to my dad for coming down and helping me for a day or two with this project. He was a big help as always and his expertise was much needed for something like this. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot as I did through this whole process. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps the channel out. Also remember to check me out on Facebook and Instagram as I like to post stuff up there as well and keep you guys updated throughout the weeks. I also try to post a new video every week, one being a short or a reel, and the next week after being an actual video. So I like to try to keep that up, guys. Every Friday at 3 p.m., new content should be up. So remember to check me out. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Catch you on the next one.